So let's go over our favorite stock. What has happened today? Because there are some very interesting things that are unfolding, especially in the bond market as well as in the energy markets. You are seeing some other companies as well. A lot of real estate companies that are announcing layoffs as of right now. We do know we have the Fed meeting tomorrow. We're going to get the Fed raising rates. It's expected and the markets are pricing in 0.75%. And it's essentially a lose-lose scenario overall. There's, there's no win uh, for the markets. There's no win for the Fed that is coming after the Fed meeting. Now, we could see a relief rally to a certain degree, considering that the NASDAQ is down over 31% since the start of 2022. There is a case to be made. Potentially, you could see a rally, but there's no good news. There's nothing good that is going to come out from the Fed tomorrow, and I highly doubt we will see a big rally like we've seen in the past. We're probably going to get the Fed essentially admitting that they were wrong there's not going to be a soft inflation gdp is going to be very low if not potentially negative and we are going to go into a recession here in 2022 so we're going to dive into all of this key information if you guys find value out of the video hit the like button subscribe to the channel source those comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section thank you guys for tuning in now let's get into it so First and foremost, the thing that I really want to point out is what is going on in the bond markets today. The bond markets across the world are essentially getting destroyed. The dollar value of bonds are going down, meaning the yields are going up. And as you guys can see right here, three minutes ago, the 10-year treasury yield tops 3.45%, the highest in 11 years. And that's why you're seeing the prices of, or I shouldn't say prices, um, which prices of real estate are, are kind of still going up in some places. But the uh, cost of acquiring a mortgage or getting a new house is going through the roof as well because of these bond yields. And this is really anticipation of the Fed meeting coming tomorrow and what the Fed policy is going to look like heading into the future. It's widely expected we're going to get a 75 basis point rate hike tomorrow because that's what the markets are pricing in. And over the last 40 or 50 years now, the, mark the Fed has almost always done what the markets have priced in and the markets have now priced in 75 basis points instead of a half point rate hike because of the cpi report we got on friday which did show inflation did not peak out and that leads me into why the markets are potentially just going to sell everything off uh coming tomorrow because the Fed puts out their summary of economic projections. So what they expect GDP to be, unemployment rates, what they expect, uh, a couple other things to be as well. I think the most important thing is going to be the GDP forecast because we got this last economic projection back in March and the situation has changed a lot. Back in March, the Fed estimated we would see 2.8% GDP growth for 2022 and we just seen a negative quarter print of GDP of 1.5%, which basically throws their projections out the window. It's saying, hey, the Fed is wrong. If the Fed does not essentially say, hey, we expect GDP to be uh, less than 1%, we expect a recession. The markets are going to say, hey, the Fed is disconnected from reality. They don't understand what is going on. And we basically cannot trust the Fed. At the same time, if they come out and say, hey, we expect GDP to be plus or minus half a percent for 2022, something that is reasonable, something that the markets are already expecting, the, the markets might say, hey, this is not good. The Fed expects us to go into a recession. At the same time, the terminal rate expectations are going much higher. And the terminal rate is essentially where the Fed wants to get interest rates and where they're essentially going to stop raising interest rates, where their end rate is projected to be. And 39% of market participants expect that terminal rate to be uh, 4.25 percent or in between 4.25 percent and four and a half percent so substantially higher than where we are currently at and that's forecasting out to july 26 2023 so we're going to be faced with this scenario that the markets really have not priced in and that is going into recession as the fed continues to raise rates to get inflation down and i've said this a couple times we've never been in a situation where the personal savings rate has been so low inflation has been so high we're going into recession and the federal funds rate has been so low we have never ever had that in the history of the stock market so it's it's a really bad situation a recession at all but if you have a recession 
and the federal funds rate is low, aka the Fed cannot accommodate the markets, and inflation is high, that's like the worst setup um, that you could see being being a Fed member or an investor at all. It's like the worst case scenario, the last thing <coughs> that you want to see. Now, we also do have retail sales. They come out 7.30 in the morning tomorrow, and that's going to uh, be a little bit of the pregame for the Fed. That's going to come out. Uh, it's actually 8.30 in the morning because uh, I don't know why this is on Central Time, so it's 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then the Fed interest rate decision and the FOMC economic projections comes out at 2 p.m. And then 2.30 p.m., you do have the Fed press conference. Now, keep in mind what happened the last time around with the Fed um interest rate decision. Essentially, the markets went down about 1% based off of the Fed actually raising rates at 2 p.m. And then Fed Jerome Powell actually came out, started talking throughout the probability of a 75 basis point rate hike. The markets ended up closing 3% positive uh, by the end of the day. In one and a half hours, the markets went up like 4%. It was absolutely wild. And then the next day, the NASDAQ dropped almost 6%. So, I wouldn't make any conclusions, especially around 2 p.m., what's going to happen with the markets. But after the Fed, you might get a little bit of a sense of direction. And if you guys are a little bit confused tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. after the Fed talks, I will break down what they said and essentially try to uh, figure out what's going to happen, right? Uh, because last time around, I was very surprised the markets bounced so hard because of a, a couple key things the Fed said, like a soft-ish landing. The Fed essentially, last Fed meeting, said, hey, we're probably going to see a recession. We're not going to see this soft landing that everybody is hoping for. So that was really something that, that threw me off and that um, really led me to buy some puts after the Fed meeting. And those did hit very nicely. Obviously, the next day with the Nasdaq dropping 6%, uh, wouldn't expect anything less. Now, there is that. The bond market, you know, the yields are going parabolic, and this is putting a lot of pressure on a lot of your growth stocks that will eventually have to borrow money into the future because, hey, the 10 year treasuries go up. That makes the cost of borrowing money very, very expensive. And those are the main things that are actually happening today. The overall bond market around the world is essentially going. Uh, crazy. The bond yields in Europe, the bond yields in China, bond yields in Russia, bond yields everywhere are going through the roof. So it's not a good thing. It's definitely not a good thing. Uh, just overall what is happening. The the the, the era of low uh, or cheap money, I should say, low borrowing cost is gone. The biggest thing the markets are going to pay attention to, though, I will say it, uh, you know, multiple times if I have to, but it's the probability of going into recession and the Fed continuing to raise rates as we are in a recession. You, you have only seen that twice in history where the Fed has actually raised rates as we are already in a recession. And that was in 1974 as well as 1981. So there is that. That's what you guys need to know. Now let's talk about our favorite stock. And that is obviously going to be AMC. And what is happening here on the day for AMC stock? Let's go ahead and pull it up. We are seeing some of your quote unquote meme stocks that are running today. Like BBBY, GameStop has also been making some very interesting moves. But we did initially sell off once we started the day. Down to $11.11 .11 per share. Could be a lucky number right there bounced up and then we have continued to trend uh ever so slightly to the upside stocks like Redbox that have really been stealing a lot of the market um attention are down today i believe Redbox is down like 30 percent uh so far on the day and we are heading into the close of the day so we'll see what happens by the end of the day but amc stock is up three percent and that is definitely a positive thing rather than not right you want to see the stock up um, rather than not. Now, on the Ortex data, I called this out in the last video, but essentially the Ortex data has revised the short interest um, and said it's 2% lower today than it was yesterday. Obviously, shorts have not covered. You can boil this down to one simple thing. Ortex has no idea, right? They go off of the exchange reported short interest data, which came out uh, June 9th. The settlement day for that was May 31st, and that came out at 21.31% short interest. So they really have no idea. That, that's just the honest truth. But the current short interest of free flow estimated to be 20.1%. Current shares that are sold short of 103.62 million. Cost bar minimum of 10.5%. Cost bar average of 20.16%. Cost bar max of 33%. 100% share utilization. 
shares out on loan 159.83 million free flow out on loan 31 percent so i would take this all with a big grain of salt we know the short interest is obviously much higher than that even if you factor in all of the market maker shorts that you have to see because of all these puts that are going through on the option chain the short interest is much much higher and i will say it again i think it's a very positive thing the stock is up three percent on a day where bond yields are going parabolic and you are just seeing overall fear in the markets with a pretty steep sell-off in some certain equity so there you have it right there we still do have a strong chance of a gamma squeeze if we do see a bullish reaction in the markets about 8100 calls that are in the money 366,000 calls that are out of the money and puts that are in the money of about 130,000. i said it in the last video if you do see just half of the calls go into the money or half of the puts go out of the money then you're going to see about 25 million shares that have to be bought by the market makers by the end of this week and that is comparable to the volume that we have been seeing over the past couple of days so if you're talking about seeing a whole day's worth of uh, volume going into AMC just because of the market makers having to de-hedge a lot of those options, that would be a lot of volume and that would be a big volume spike and that would push the stock up probably 10, 15, 20, 25 percent uh, in a one day period. But it's obviously going to come down to what happens with the Fed. And if you guys have not seen the max pain is $16 per share by the end of this week. And that is also very, very encouraging if that does happen. On a technical basis, RSI in a bad place, 43.45. The MACD is going bearish. The stock is at $11.87 per share, really in this range, in between about $10 and $15 per share, really about $10 to $14 per share over the last couple of weeks. So not too much has actually happened. You're not drilling down, hitting new lows. You're also not hitting uh, higher highs. You're really in this consolidation phase. We are waiting for more data. We are waiting for the next move. If we do see a bullish reaction, 50 and 100-day moving averages, at $14.75 per share and $16.29 per share will be the key levels to be watching for. Now that is going to be it for this video. If you guys have not seen the first video I uploaded, you get you guys definitely want to check that out. We went into more detail about expectations for the Fed, all of that. Go ahead watch that video if you have not already but in the meantime hit the like button subscribe to the channel source those comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section get your free stock with weeble mumu and public down below in the description and if you guys want to come trade with me live in real time link down below in the pinned comment to do so for that thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one